I'm Bruce Blitz, and welcome to Cartooning with Blitz. Now, for the subject of today's show, I'm going to ask you a riddle. Okay, what has eight legs and flies? Eight legs and flies. How about a spider? See, spider and his web, flies. But that's not the answer. The answer is four superheroes. See that? Eight legs and flies. And that's the subject of today's show. Comic book heroes. I'll show you how to create heroes and villains. Villains are more fun anyway. And for our feature of the day, cell painting, which is a really cool painting project, which I know you'll enjoy. Stay tuned for that. And for our doodle trick portion, alphabet tunes. Finished cartoons from letters in the alphabet. So if you're ready, all right, let's get started and draw comic book heroes. All right. Eight legs and flies. Well, there's always two answers to a riddle. Did you ever notice that? All right, let's get started. Let's do our first character, and it's going to be of an evil villain. That's right, a scientist type. And we're going to start with an ice cream cone. That's right. I'll show you what I mean. A big oval like this, or a circle, and that'll be the top part of his head. And over here, we're going to make a cone. See? Like an ice cream cone. And he's going to be an evil scientist. Now, I'll put some circles over here, and that's going to be for his ears. It doesn't look like an ice cream cone anymore, does it? His neck, and a line down here for his shoulders. And now we're going to switch to marker. And we're going to create his nose. Now, he's going to have like a broken, pointed nose. And we're going to put the pen right where the circle meets the ice cream cone like that and make a broken line that comes down to a pointed end of the nose. And here's the nostril. And come back. Okay. Over here, make another nostril. Now, we're going to duplicate this line over here, but not quite as heavy. Just a little lighter and maybe break that line up a little bit. All right. Now for his mouth. Well, he'll be scowling like this. So we'll give him like a U-shape going this way, like a frown. And a little off-center, too. Gives a little more personality. Now, we want him to have thin, pursed lips. So all we have to do is put a line like that. See how that works? Now, a line coming out from the side of his nostrils. And now for his cheekbone. Now, we're going to make it a bony kind of cheekbone coming in like that. Real sunk-in cheeks. Do the same thing over here. And now for his jaw. Well, give him a pointed jaw and come around and taper it down to a really pointed chin. There you go. And now we're going to continue this line a little bit, and we're going to create a shadow effect. Now, if the light is coming from the upper right-hand side, this side here would be the shaded side. Now, we can simulate a gray tone, even though we're working with a black marker, by putting lines next to each other like that. See how that indicates like a gray tone? Same thing over here, a little bit down the side, maybe even a little bit on the side of the nose. Now for his eyes. All right. Just a line like that, and a line like that, and his eye coming out, looking off to the left. And a dot in the center. All right. Now what's really going to make him look much more evil is his eyebrow. Nice, graceful line like that. And over here, the same thing. Make it nice and thick. And a line right in the center. Yep. Now some detail underneath the eye. And some puffiness and some lines. Character lines. Even though he has a bad character. Still character lines. Now, put his neck in. And a real thin neck. And we're going to duplicate this chin line right over here. And then fill it in. And that way it looks like his head is casting a shadow over his neck. Now, I'll put him in an evil doctor lab coat. With some buttons over here. And now let's finish up his face. Now, we'll put in his ears using those circles for guidelines. I'll give him large ears like that. And another ear over here. Now, if you don't have a villain, well, then your hero has no one to defeat. You've got no conflict and you've got no basis for a story. No hair. And again, if the light is coming from the upper right-hand side, we're going to shade the left side with some lines. And let's see. Let's give him some lines on his forehead. All right. It looks pretty good. Now let's add some color. First, I'm going to erase the pencil lines. And the ink lines stay, and the pencil lines go. All right. Now, Lay a light peach here on the side. Now, let's see. Well, this is the darker side. I'm going to put a highlight over here. Now, what I, look what I do. I make a circular motion like that and create that 
highlight right there. See that value is a little bit lighter? Do the same thing on the cheeks. And come down here. And there's a little on his neck right there. Now I'm going to switch to Loco Coco and shade this side. So I'll lay it on its side, which is a brown. See how that kind of brings out a shadow effect? Looks pretty good. Maybe his ear would be a little bit in the shed, a shadow. And over here, where we shaded it, maybe his cheek and a little bit in here. And this is the kind of thing you can do a little bit more of when you have more time. And now a little yellow for the background. Just make him kind of come to the foreground a little bit and stand out. Now, for his eyes, maybe he's got some sort of power with his eyes. So let's take red color stick and right from his eyes, have some beams coming out. Maybe thicken them up a little bit. And there you have it. The evil scientist doctor type. You take a look at him, and I'll play some evil music to go with it. All right. Now let's move on. But first, it's time for the gag sketch of the day. From the evil scientist to the gag sketch. All right. And take a look at this. Ready? Rock and roll. Now, I'll have to explain this a little bit. We have college sign up here. So he's enrolling in college. So it's rock and rolling. There you have it. Rock and roll. All right. Well, for more puns like that, visit me on my website at bruceblitz.com for drawing tips, cartooning tips, crafts, projects, all sorts of neat things. All right. Let's do another character. And this time we're going to draw a woman. Hero type. Now I'm going to start with an egg shape. Now follow along. This is a little tricky, but if we take a step by step, it'll work out fine. Now she got a narrow chin. We're going to taper that. A little like a guitar pick here, too. Now remember, this is a three dimensional object, not like a guitar pick is very flat, isn't it? You're looking on the side, it almost disappears. But we're going to think of this as a three dimensional object, like a balloon or an egg. And put the guideline in like that, and then wrap it around. Now you see that? This way it looks like it's turned a little bit, doesn't it? Now she's going to be looking over her left shoulder. So let's put some more guidelines in here. This will be for her nose. Her mouth will be down here. Maybe some lines in here for her eyes. Now I'm going to switch to marker. All right, now for her nose, start with those guidelines crisscross and put a little line like that. And then I'm going to leave a, a space and put a heavier line there for her nose and then a nostril over here. Maybe come back a little bit, but I don't want to fill it in necessarily because that's not important. You want to keep it real delicate. Now over here I'm going to have her upper lip. She's going to have a serious expression. Now for her lower lip, now watch, I don't have to connect it necessarily. I want to bear down on that marker and get a real nice thick line. Now that creates like a, a dimension, like a shadow for her lower lip, like it's coming out a little bit. Okay, now over here we're going to draw her eye. Now I'm bearing down again. So I'm using the art tool to my advantage here. I'll put a circle in for her eye. Same thing over here. All right, now, this time I'm going to squeeze that pen back. When I say squeeze, I'm going to lift it up, kind of pull back, and then just let that point touch the page, and I'll get a real thin line for her eyelid. See this? Same thing over here. Now, while we're over here, let's bear down and give her some eyelashes. Now, over here, I'm going to give her some eyebrows for expression. Again, I'm bearing down for the front part and then coming back. All right. All right, now for the side of her face, we're starting at her eyes and give her a cheekbone and stop. Then come down again and give her a strong but delicate chin and come back for her jawline and a line like this for her cheek. Now, see how that kind of suggests a rounded object there? And what we're going to do now is give her a mask. That's right. Go right over that whole face and come around. Perfect. All right, now we're going to give her a maybe a headband, and I'm going to switch markers for her hair because I want some real bold strokes. So this is a wider tip marker. Now her hair is kind of a heart shape. Comes all the way around like this. Maybe a circle there for an earring. Another one there. Some hair coming out this way. And coming around this side as well. And now this line here is for her neck. Now. Like we did with the hero, with the evil villain, we're going to double this chin line a little bit and come up and then fill it in because that would be casting a shadow. And that gives it a little more dimension. And here's her shoulder, and she's looking over her shoulder at us. And there it is. Came out pretty good. Put a line up here for her 
far ahead. Okay. Now I'm going to erase the pencil lines and add some color. Now a good way to find models for your characters would be look through a magazine. That's right. Look through a magazine and look at all the people that are in ads. Just ordinary people. And by dressing them up with uh, the appropriate costume, different hairstyles, you can get a whole different array of characters. Put some yellow in for our mask. Use celebrities, you can use ordinary people. A supporting cast of characters, you need them too. Now I'm going to use a little red for her lips. And I'll leave a little white space on the bottom lip there. That's good. A little red over there, and maybe some blue for her eyes. And for her hair, I want to use orange, bright orange. Use bright orange color stick here. Yeah, that brings it out. And we're coming down here, and maybe a little red for her headband, and for her collar, and a little blue for the background. And she came out to be a great type. All right. Came out nice. I like that. All right. Now let's switch gears totally and do a comical hero type. And you may have seen him before. I don't know. Hero guy. That's right. And he's got a round face. And we're going to start with his ear. Just like that. All right. Now his nose. And here's that round face. Comes around like that. And his eyes are looking up. And he'll be looking at someone in a moment. I'll show you who that is. And his eyebrows are down. And he's scowling as well. Put some freckles in him. And he's scowling because he's not afraid. That's right. He's not afraid. Look at this hair. Well, when you design your character, it's always a good idea to give him some sort of outstanding feature. In this case, I gave him this kind of hair. And that's something you, build some many, you can build gags on. His gloves, and here's his chest. And HG for his emblem, for hero guy. Now, who he's looking at is his adversary. I'm going to make a nose all the way up here because we want the adversary to be much larger. Now this, let's give him like a earphone effect and a mask. Come around and down like this and over. And his expression is he's laughing at hero guy. That's right. Imagine laughing at hero guy. But I tell you this because when you have a large character like this for your villain, it actually works better. Now this is a formula that goes back for years, like look at Popeye and Bluto, because you wouldn't get your readers on the side of the hero if the bully wasn't much larger. So let's label him Bully Guy. All right, there you have it. Bully Guy and Hero Guy. And that's the sort of thing you want to do when you're creating characters. You don't want to have everybody the same height. You want to create contrast, like all different shapes and sizes. So create good guys, bad guys, make up superpowers for them, uh, create a little story, and pretty soon you're making your own comic book. Now stay tuned for the feature of the day. All right, now today's feature is called Cell Art. That's not S-E-L-L, -L, as in selling your artwork. This is C-E-L, and C-E-L is short for celluloid. Now celluloid sheets were and still are used in animation and I've got one for you right here to take a look at. Now what it is is a clear plastic sheet that fits over a constant background and it's drawn on one side and it's painted on the other side. Now it takes many of these sheets photographed in succession and played back to create the illusion of movement. Now, the amount of these that it takes for even an eight-minute cartoon is in the many thousands. And for a feature-length film like you see in the movies, in the millions. Now, even though there were millions of these created, they've become very rare, valuable, and collectible. And now they're even making them from scratch, not like the ones you saw in your favorite cartoons. And they're being signed by cartoonists everywhere. But you and I, we can make our own. And that's what we're going to do today. Make our own cell. Now, first thing you need is an idea. And the reason for that is because without an idea, there's no reason to pick up this pencil and draw. And my idea is, I'm going to draw a golfer. So I've already created the background of a golf course. 
And now I'm going to take a piece of tracing paper and lay it on top of this background. All right, now I'm going to draw the character right in the center here. And here's his head. And this is a great action pose. And come down for his foot over here. And I'm drawing over the background so I know exactly where everything is going to be. Now, I couldn't draw something that was over the tree. You have to make sure that you're not in some, something's not in the way. That's why you're drawing it over the background. All right, now I put the golf club in his hand. And the features in the face, like that. And there you have it. Well, that's the idea. All right, now, in the interest of time, I've got one already finished for you. And it looks like this. I'll lay it right on top of that background, and there's the finished coffer. So this is the tracing paper stage. Now the next thing is you want to get a hold of a cell. Now they still call them cells, but I think that's for traditional reasons or nostalgic reasons, because now they're called acetate sheets, and they're made out of this acetate, which can be bought in an art store in sheets or tablet form. And here's what you want to do is lay it on top of that tracing paper, and we'll remove the background, and we're going to ink it in. Now what you want to do, you want to register this by taping it down. And registered means always in the same spot. All right, because you don't want it to move. Now the next thing you're going to need is a marker. And it's important that you get a waterproof marker, one that will adhere to the plastic sheet. Now I've got a nice chisel point there, which will uh, give me a nice thick and thin line. All right, you ready? All right, ready to ink in the cell. And we'll start with his head. Now you know it takes 24 frames to pass through the projector of one second of watching time for us. Can you imagine? That means that it takes 24 of these cells to pass through the projector to make that one second. A lot of work, huh? Now some studios actually only made 12 drawings and photograph them twice to get to 24. Now when you see that kind of animation, it's a little stiffer than the ones that used all 24 drawings because that makes it a lot smoother when it's done that way. But most people can't really tell the difference and it makes it a lot easier. All right, now for the sake of time again, I've got one all finished of the inked in stage and it looks like this. And there he is. Now let's lay this down right here. And we work from the reverse side. So I'm going to flip it over just like that. Now the next thing we want to talk about is paint. And you want to go to an art store and get a, an acrylic paint, a water-based paint, something that uh, comes out of a tube, because that's what's going to stick onto the acetate. All right. Now the other thing you're going to need is a brush to apply the paint. And I like a nice sable hair brush. Now, they can be pretty expensive, but I found this one here for just a few dollars because they come in all different grades and price ranges. You know, ready? And we're ready to start painting in now. And I'm going to use a little bit of red for his sweater. So here we go. And you want to try to keep enough water in there so it's got a nice creamy texture to it. And we'll do his sweater right here. Now, in the old days, top animators that you know of today actually started as cell washers. That's right, they used to reuse these cells after they did all this work to them, especially during wartime when some of these materials were uh, rare. Then they would graduate to assistant and then eventually a top animator. Now you want to blob this paint on, that's very important because you want it to be opaque. That means that when you turn it back over you won't be able to see through it. Now, I hope you're getting a sense of how much work it takes to finish even one cell, let alone thousands of them. Now, I've got one already finished for you to show you. And it looks like this. Oh, nice and shiny. There he is. Now, I'm going to lay this over the background. And you'll see what that looks like. Just like that. And now it's time for a frame or a mat. And look what that does to enhance this drawing. I think that looks great. And there it is. Now, cells are so bright and vivid and shiny, and it's something you'd be proud to hang on your wall or give to someone in your family or your friends. 
Now, visit me on my website at BruceBlitz.com for more information on this project and other neat cartooning tips and other crafts and other neat things as well. Now stay tuned for our cartoon doodle tricks. Oops. Welcome to today's Doodle Tricks, and some friends stopped by because they love Doodle Tricks. Hi guys, how you doing? Hi. Hi. All right, now today we're going to do alphabet tunes, Finnish cartoons from letters in the alphabet. So let's start with the letter B. Now, I'll write the letter B right here, and then I'm going to turn this on its side. Now, I'm going to draw a cartoon animal from this letter B. Now, what kind of animal? likes to chase you when it gets angry, and has big horns. Anybody? Bull. A bull, that's right. And here's an ear down here. <laughs> and let's see, now we're going to put the horns in. One there, one there, and come right back around, and how about his mouth? He does not look too happy, does he? <laughs> All right, let's do another one. All right, this time... We're going to draw, and it's not going to be a letter. It's a punctuation mark, which goes along with letters, right? And what is that? Question mark. A question mark, right. So let's put an eye over here, and eyebrows up. And let's put an ear over here, and let's give him fluffy hair. How's that? Curls. <laughs> and now let's do a facial outline. And this part here, that'll be his mouth. Let's put a lower lip on it. And he's thinking, he's got a question. Pretty cool, huh? Yeah. yeah! All right, now let's do another one. And now, help me out. I'm going to write these letters, and you say them out loud. Ready? B, C, N, U. B, C, N, U. Okay, Carrie, say these out loud. B, C, N, U. Be seeing you. Be seeing you. That's right. Be seeing you. All right, let's put some detail in here. So right there, we'll put an eye and one over here and an eyebrow and another eyebrow. And now let's close that up and we'll make it a nose. And here's a smile. And let's see. Let's close up and make it a facial outline, put a lower lip and some ears. And we've got a guy here who looks happy. Let's close this up and make him glasses. And this line here will continue on, and we'll make it a buzz cut. <laughs> and he's saying, bye. And that, you're wondering what this is, huh? Yeah. Okay, well, he's not saying bye yet, is he? Let's put a thumb on that, and some fingers. One, two, three, four, some detail. And now he's saying, bye. Bye. <laughs> well, he's saying bye because that's all the time we have for right now, and I hope you've enjoyed it today, and my friends in the studio, too. Now, for our blitz tip, this is a great one. You get better with every piece of paper you use. Look at her. She's going to be a great artist. Look at all the paper she's got here. I'm Bruce Blitz saying thanks for being with me, and help me out, guys. Keep, Keep on, on cartooning. cartooning. Keep on cartooning.